Welcome back to Ye Old Foundry. Okay, today we're going to uh, pour off the stack molds that I made. Okay, now what's different for today that you would want to see this? Well, this is the first time I, I'll be pouring stack molds for you uh, so that you can witness how it goes. But there's a couple things that are different. Uh, in the past, what I would do is I'll take a pair of tongs, grip the edge of the steel crucible, lift it out of the uh, the furnace, set it on that fire brick, which by the way, never set it on the ground because as hot as your, your crucible is going to be, you just don't want it to be draining any kind of heat away. Put it on a fire brick. The fire brick is designed to slow the process of uh, trans heat transference okay so you want to maintain as much heat as you possibly can from the furnace to the mold so that none of your stuff freezes up before it's fully poured okay now another caution the human eyes it, it, it doesn't make any difference how long you do this the human eyes aren't gauged to be able to tell you exactly what uh, the temperature is and pouring a good casting it's essential to know what the temperature of your molten metal is okay so that you can gauge you know whether or not you're going to need uh risers uh on on you know on plain castings like these are very basic castings okay if i wanted to i could pour it a little hot and the portion of the uh casting that'll show the the um the uh piping what's called piping is uh, going to be on the side that's not going to be affected by pouring the lead in okay so it wouldn't kill me if I had a little bit of shrinkage on there but a good molder a furnace operator won't allow that to happen because it just doesn't look right it looks like you just paid no attention to what the temperature was and just poured it in. so what I you know it wasn't cheap it wasn't like the cost of a of a of a of a super car either but what I did is I bought um, an immersion pyrometer, okay? The last time I poured, I used the immersion pyrometer. It worked just fine. You know, I don't know how calibrated it is, but it gave me an idea exactly how hot the metal was. I'll show it to you. Okay, this here's the immersion parameter. Now, why is that immersion parameter? Because this becomes immersed, put into the uh, the molten metal. Okay, this has got a bi a metallic strip in there, and you know, if anybody, if you know anything about electricity, when you have two dissimilar metals being uh, you know affected by heat, it'll generate some type of of voltage. Okay, obviously it's going to be DC voltage and and it's a dirty thing but I got my my uh, scale there and you just dip it in there and in this case if I go past 13 I'll have to let it cool down but I'm going to try not to have it go past 13 remember aluminum it's pouring range depending on what you're pouring is 1250 degrees Fahrenheit to 1400 degrees Fahrenheit 1250 being the thicker blockier things 12 uh, 1400 being the thin highly decorative you know highly uh, precise things you know where you have to have the metal hot enough to pour into all the nooks and crannies that you're trying to form okay uh, this thing I could pour it probably at 1200 degrees then it probably still pour but I want to make sure that all the uh, the definition is still maintained in there. Let me put this away. Now another another thing is that I got my new uh, jet in here. Instead of using the Harbor Freight, uh, what was it? More of a burner for burning. Um, weeds and such I actually plopped down the the bucks to get 
a, uh, a proper, uh, you know, propane jet, okay? Propane burner, not jet burner, okay? And this is basically what it looks like. Now, in theory, that burner is going to be able to uh, give me a hot enough flame not just to do aluminum but also to do brass and bronze if I ever find scrap brass and bronze and uh, well, I've got I got junk in the house that I I poured when I was on the ships that it's really just junk you know I just played with it like for instance I've got some uh, ashtrays that I made I don't smoke neither does the wife we're not using it I might take those and melt those down for another project if I have a project that requires uh, brass and bronze to, to be the best casting. But in this case, okay, we don't need that. Also, oh, I did start mentioning I used to pick up, a, uh, pick up the crucible in here with a pair of tongs. It was, it was a good enough grip on the tongs that I was never really worried about dropping anything but all you got to do is just kind of look at it and say hey you know probably not the best idea to grip and just you know it's molten metal if it ever slipped for some reason like if I lost my my concentration loosened the grip or something and it fell that stuff's gonna splash you got over a thousand degrees flying everywhere uh, not good for you not good for the things around you uh, so Yesterday I spent the time to actually make something that would not only last, but would be a lot, lot uh, safer to pick up that crucible. I made a hook, made a hook, Let's see if I can get you aimed in the right direction. I made a hook that would pick up this yoke I made. Okay. It's just as, as strong as those, just as strong as the the pair of tongs but a lot less likely to slip on me no matter what okay and so I am I'm ready to go and I'll bring you back when I get to the point where you know we're almost ready to pour see you in a little bit okay we are at the point now where everything is molten and I've got to uh, skim off the, the uh, stuff, the stuff off the top. You check the uh, temperature and all that. But pretty soon we're going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to be pouring it. So I'll just go ahead and leave the camera on. And hopefully uh, this noise back behind me ain't going to be too much to uh, drown out everything. Once it gets hot enough. I'll be able to turn off the uh, the fuel source. And by the way, that uh, that new burner worked just fine. Okay. It's, it was a matter of me, the learning curve that I was on. I had to learn how to use that burner because I tried to uh, go a little too fast on increasing the uh, the, the uh, psi on the uh, gas, and it would flame out ever so often. Well, once it gets red hot in there, there ain't no flaming out. But, uh, you know, you got to let it warm up all the way as far as it can go. So, uh, I'll get started.
I ran out of aluminum. It took the whole thing. So if uh, all of them are all of them aren't made, it'll uh, I'll just have to make some more. It's poured real nice though. It was plenty hot. Poured real hot. Uh, not real hot. Plenty, plenty hot. It would only, according to the dial, I was just around 12, 1200, and so I didn't want to uh, make it much more than that. 1250. That should probably, it was probably realistically 1250, and I just didn't want to uh, wait for the dial to finally get up to that point, because uh, once it hit a thousand, it came up real slow. So realistically, as well as that poured, I think uh, I think she's well mostly made. I'm crossing my fingers that uh, all five sets were made. But hey, when you got a small crucible like that, and you almost fill it up, and it all goes, you're not gonna have to worry about it too much. Because you got the chance of being able to pour some more a little bit later. So I'll go ahead and uh, get the get the cart, and we'll start breaking it apart. Just in case anybody's wondering, this kind of a safety barrier, not only to keep the, if there was any spits and spatters, you know, which there was none, okay, everything was retained. Uh, I wouldn't want any of that to get on the, the car, or if somebody was walking by, wouldn't want any of that to uh, spit way over them and hit them, okay. So now I can put this away. Part of the game. Okay, where did I do that? Took about a half an hour to 40 minutes for the uh, the melt to melt. I don't need to get that any hotter. Modified this so it would work better, which it did. Didn't have to struggle with that uh, nearly as much. Thank you. 
better make sure that you're aimed in the right direction. And towards the action. This sure does smell like the stuff that we used in San Diego. Gotta get me a little scraper, something to get in between. I know just the thing. Just saw this yesterday.
All right. The ones that poured came out good. Okay. This is why we call it stack molding. Is because you can pour them one right on top of the other. Okay. Notice that metal was was hotter than 1200. See how it ran into all the vent holes that I put up? Uh, those will have to be ground off. But that's for another time. Okay, another successful pour. I'm always too darn impatient when I'm melting the metal, but it finally got there and I poured it before it got too hot. Unfortunately, it just didn't have enough metal. Yeah. Now, if I had a number 70 crucible like we used to have in the foundry in the ships, I'd had plenty and I would have had to have uh, you know, pigged off the rest. Uh, pigged off is just another phrase meaning pouring the excess into a pig iron mold. Okay, so I got some uh, cleaning up to do and in the fear, near future after those get cooled down I'll go ahead and cut them off, take the excess metal off and uh, start planning for my next heat which is going to be one more of those at least I'm also thinking about making some uh, alignment pins for those you know they it, it worked out good everything poured fine just ran out of metal but uh, if you have alignment pins with those uh, you had take less of a chance of things becoming you know jostled a little bit and we hope that I mean that was hot that was plenty hot heat coming off of it just got to make sure that uh, my little plastic receiver there isn't gonna melt on me so I got better take it in there and pour it on the deck all right this is this is making uh, lead hammer molds <laughs> I'll see you next time uh, Liberty call